So you've probably already heard about ChatGPT, this artificial intelligence which can answer complex questions and is probably going to destroy the high school essay forever. And as a denomination researcher, I'm actually pretty interested in what it has to say about Christian denominations. And I can fact check it in real time. So let's take a look and see what ChatGPT has to say if we throw at it some questions about what denominations believe about different areas of theology. So we're going to start here by asking the question, what do Baptists believe about, oops, I always misspell believe. I know how to spell it, but I just type it wrong. Believe about baptism. Okay. Here's what it says. Baptists are a group of Protestant Christians who believe in the importance of baptizing individuals by immersion in water as a public profession of faith. According to Baptist theology, baptism is a symbol of the believer's union with Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection, and it is a sign of the believer's commitment to follow Jesus as Lord. Baptists also believe that baptism is a means of grace through which God's love and forgiveness are extended to the believer. Baptists generally practice adult baptism, meaning that they believe that individuals should be baptized only after they have made a personal profession of faith in Jesus Christ and have demonstrated a desire to follow him. Some Baptists believe that infants can also be baptized if their parents are believers, but this is not a universal belief among Baptists. In terms of the mode of baptism, Baptists believe in baptizing by immersion, in which the believer is fully submerged in water as a way to most closely reflect the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. However, some Baptists may also practice baptism by sprinkling or pouring, depending on the individual circumstances and the preferences of the believer being baptized. Overall, Baptists believe that baptism is an important part of the Christian faith, and they place a strong emphasis on the symbolism and meaning of the rite. Okay, um, interesting. So, uh, there's some stuff that's wrong here. Generally practice adult baptism, always, right? Always practice adult baptism. Some black Baptists believe infants can be baptized if their parents are believed. That's really not a Baptist belief. So, nope, it's wrong on that. In terms of the mode of baptism, baptizing by immersion, yes. Some may practice baptism by sprinkling or pouring. Once again, not really. That's not really something that happens. I mean, if so, it would be the rarest of rare exceptions. I actually made a video here on my channel about a denomination that did practice an infant baptism by sprinkling. Uh, not a whole denomination, but actually just one congregation. And that's a very rare thing. So also, believe that baptism is a means of grace. Um, I think if you polled Baptist ministers... Um, people at seminaries and ask them, is baptism a means of grace? They would answer no to that question because that's kind of viewing a sacramental view of baptism. But depending on what you mean by means of grace, uh, there's some people who may answer yes to that if you're not talking about a means of saving grace. But even so, I think in general, I'd have to say I wouldn't give this a very high rating to this question. Chat GPT, wrong on that one. All right. Well, let's try another denomination tradition. What do churches of Christ believe, spell it right this time, even though I capitalized it, about eschatology? Okay, this should be good. It's thinking a little bit more before it answers this one for me. I hit enter. Oh, it's scrolling, but I can't see it. Eschatology is the branch of theology that deals with the end of the world, the final judgment, and the ultimate fate of humanity. The Churches of Christ, also known as the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, is a group of Protestant Christians who believe in the importance of following Jesus' teachings and living according to the principles of the New Testament. In terms of eschatology, the Churches of Christ generally hold to a premillennial view, which means they believe that Jesus will return to earth before the millennium, a thousand-year period of peace and prosperity. They also believe that Jesus' return will be followed by a final judgment, in which the fate of each person person will be determined based on their faith and deeds. The churches of Christ also believe in the concept of the resurrection of the dead, in which the bodies of believers will be resurrected and reunited with their spirits, and they will live forever with God in heaven. They also believe in the existence of hell, a place of eternal punishment for those who have rejected God's love and grace. Overall, the churches of Christ hold to a belief in the importance of living a life of faith and following Jesus' teachings, and they believe that this will ultimately lead to eternal life with God in heaven. Hmm. Some big problems here, too. So, Churches of Christ are not premillennial, right? And they also would, the, a lot of them would be upset by the fact that they were called Protestant Christians here. Um, but leaving that aside, the biggest problem here generally hold to a premillennial view. They're mostly amillennial. And so, no, they, they do believe in Jesus' return and a final judgment and the resurrection of the dead and living forever with God in heaven and the existence of hell. So a lot of good things here. But the main core question I was ask, asking, eschatology, you know, they answered premillennial. So uh, incorrect there. And... Um, the importance of living a life of faith and following Jesus' teachings, and they believe that this will ultimately lead to eternal life with God in heaven. 
Um, kind of sounds like it's teaching uh, a little bit, you know, there are a little bit different beliefs about salvation than churches of Christ would believe too, although it's hard to see exactly what they're saying. So a lot of churches of Christ might, might agree with that last statement. But overall, the main question itself, I have to say, that's a fail in the answer there. All right, let's throw something different. What do Presbyterians believe? Well, I'll mess it up one way or the other. About images of Christ. Let's go with that. Presbyterians are a group of Protestant Christians who follow the teachings of John Calvin and adhere to the Westminster Confession of Faith. In general, Presbyterians believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, and the head of the church. As far as images of Christ are concerned, Presbyterians generally believe that it is acceptable to depict Jesus in art and other visual forms, as long as such depictions are done in a respectful and appropriate manner. However, Presbyterians also believe that the worship of images or icons is a form of idolatry and is therefore prohibited. According to Presbyterian theology, Jesus is not to be worshipped as an idol or an object of veneration, but rather he is to be revered as the Son of God and the Savior of the, Savior of the world. Therefore, Presbyterians generally believe that it is important to avoid making images of Jesus that are meant to be worshipped and to instead focus on worshipping Jesus through prayer, study of the Bible, and other spiritual practices. Overall, Presbyterians believe that it is uh, acceptable to depict Jesus in art and other visual forms as long as such depictions are done in respectful and appropriate manner. I'm getting deja vu here. And as long as they are not meant to be worshipped as idols. Yeah, this whole respectful and appropriate manner thing is is twice in there. Okay, um, so a lot of this is right in the sense that generally Presbyterians believe this. Um, yeah, uh, Presbyterians obviously don't use iconography and they would argue against such things as being prohibited. However, there, I was hoping it would talk about the more conservative group of Presbyterians and kind of the historical view um, that prohibits the use of images of Jesus Christ at all, um, not just in worship, and um, and would say that you shouldn't, you know, you have a nativity scene, for example, would be one thing that they might dislike, or have Jesus depicted in a movie, something like that. I thought I saw some other stuff that was strange here. Um, some of the stuff about Jesus is not to be worshipped as an idol or object of veneration. I think that's kind of strange there. Um, who's who's doing that or who's saying anything about that? Kind of a um, it's kind of a straw man you're throwing up here, Chat GPT, about uh, that anybody would would believe that Jesus would be worshipped as an idol. So that's kind of strange there too. But um, okay, um, better than most of the questions we've asked so far. So let's go on and ask, what do conservative confessional Lutherans believe about women in ministry? Okay, try this. Conservative confessional Lutherans are a group of Lutheran Christians who hold to a high view of the authority of the Bible and the historic creeds and confessions of the Lutheran Church. In general, conservative confessional Lutherans believe that the Bible is the ultimate authority on matters of faith and practice, and they seek to follow the teachings of the Bible in all aspects of their lives. It reads very much like a high school essay, doesn't it? I'm very, very prone to saying in general, or, you know, it doesn't want to be too specific here. In terms of women in ministry, conservative confessional Lutherans generally believe that the Bible teaches that men and women are both created in the image of God and are of equal value and worth. However, they also believe that the Bible teaches that there are specific roles and responsibilities for men and women within the church and that these roles should be followed. According to conservative confessional Lutheran theology, the office of pastor, also known as the public ministry, is reserved for men, as it is seen as being rooted in the example of Jesus and the apostles who were all male. Some conservative confessional Lutherans may also believe that the Bible teaches that women should not hold positions of authority over men in the church and that they should instead submit to the leadership of men. However, it is important to note that all, not all conservative confessional Lutherans hold the same views on this issue, and there may be some variation in beliefs within this group. It is also worth noting that other branches of Lutheranism, such as the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, ELCA, have more liberal views on women in ministry and may ordain women as pastors and allow them to hold positions of authority in the church. This is, this is pretty good, actually. This is maybe the best one we've got so far. Um, interesting. So um, obviously the ELCA is not a conservative confessional denomination, but it didn't say it is. It's, it's basically saying, by the way, you're asking this question about conservative confessional Lutherans and realize there's a whole bunch of other Lutherans who don't believe the same way, which especially in America is true because the ELCA is much larger than all of the other conservative confessional denominations in the United States. So, um, you know, somebody would trying to look at this from a very theological perspective may pick a few things apart. Um, uh, but I thought I thought it was good. I thought this was the best one so far. 
Okay, so with that, maybe as a turn toward the better, let's ask it, uh, what do Pentecostals believe about Holy Spirit baptism? All right, I'm just going to leave believe alone. It's going to figure it out, right? It, it knows the answer. Pentecostals are a group of Protestant Christians who place a strong emphasis on the experience of the Holy Spirit and the supernatural gifts of the Spirit, such as speaking in tongues and miraculous healing. They are named after the event of Pentecost, described in the New Testament book of Acts, when the apostles of Jesus were filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in tongues. In terms of Holy Spirit baptism, Pentecostals believe that this is a distinct experience that occurs subsequent to salvation and the initial infilling of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Holy Spirit baptism is seen as an empowerment for Christian service and witness and is often accompanied by the outward manifestation of speaking in tongues or glossolalia. Pentecostals believe that Holy Spirit baptism is available to all believers who seek it, and they often encourage believers to seek this experience as a way to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and better equipped to serve and witness for Jesus. Overall, Pentecostals place a strong emphasis on the experience of the Holy Spirit and supernatural gifts of the Spirit, and they believe that the Holy Spirit baptism is a powerful and transformative experience that is available to all believers. Last paragraph, kind of repetitive, but other than that, you know... Uh, if I was grading an essay and this was the response on Holy Spirit baptism, although it reads, you know, a little bit um, like everything I've seen here, it's it's not like it reads like a professor or a PhD wrote it. It's pretty good. You know, it's pretty accurate. In fact, there's a lot of things I was pretty impressed with here. Um, said glossolalia. Uh, they say it's available to all believers who seek it. Um, named after Pentecost, comes from the book of Acts distinct experience subsequent to salvation and the initial infilling that separate it as well like they don't just believe you speak obviously we're not, this doesn't line up perfectly with oneness pentecostals but that wasn't really who i was asking about anyway so yeah i'm impressed this is another really good one so okay let's keep on a roll here let's ask it what do catholics believe there i did it again believe about apostolic succession. Here we go. Is it is it rolling? It's really thinking about this one for some reason. Maybe I'm going to have to re-ask the question. Maybe, maybe chat GPT only knows about Protestant beliefs. There we go. Had to just enter it twice. Apostolic succession is the belief that the authority and leadership of the Catholic Church is passed down through a line of bishops who are considered to be the successors, successors of the apostles of Jesus. Catholics believe that the apostles were chosen by Jesus and were given the authority to teach, baptize, and govern the early Christian community. According to Catholic theology, this authority has been passed down through the ages from bishop to bishop through the laying on of hands, a practice known as ordination. Catholics believe that bishops, as the successors of the apostles, have the authority to teach and interpret the teachings of the church and to oversee the sacraments such as baptism and the Eucharist. Catholics also believe that the Pope, as the Bishop of Rome, is the successor of the Apostle Peter, who is considered to be the leader of the Apostles and the first Pope. The Pope is seen as head of the Catholic Church, and he has the authority to teach and interpret the teachings of the Church, as well as to make decisions on matters of faith and practice. Overall, Catholics believe that the authority and leadership of the Church is passed down through a line of bishops who are considered to be the successors of the Apostles and entrusted with the authority to teach and interpret the teachings of the church. Something about that last paragraph always seems to be just a complete re repetition of everything else, which, again, if we're aiming for trying to imitate a high school essay, a uh, perfect imitation there, because I see a ton of that kind of stuff, and even in the college essays that I do a lot of grading of. Um, so this is good. Um, there may be a, a Catholic theologian who would pick apart uh, something here or there. You know, it basically doesn't say anything different about the Pope from what it says about any other bishop. And it, it says that the bishop has the authority to oversee the sacraments such as baptism and the Eucharist. And, you know, not it'd be better to maybe call out the fact that a bishop is necessary for what we're actually talking about, which um, would be ordination, right? Um, and a priest could do baptism or the Eucharist, and, and uh, you know, even a, even a, any person could do baptism in the right circumstances if, if it was an extreme circumstance. Um, but, you know, once again, no uh, explicit major errors that I saw here, like we saw in some of the earlier questions. So I consider that a success. So now I think it's time to throw kind of a trickier question at it. Um, I'm going to ask it a question about a specific uh, denomination that's lesser known about, and uh, that is, what do sovereign, wow, having a problem here, people, sovereign grace churches, T 
teach about the charismatic movement. My typing has suddenly skills have disappeared. Sovereign Grace Churches are a group of Protestant Christians who hold to Calvinist theology and place a strong emphasis on the sovereignty of God and the grace of God and salvation. In terms of the charismatic movement, Sovereign Grace Churches generally view it with some caution as they may have concerns about certain elements of charismatic theology and practice. The charismatic movement is a broad term that refers to a movement within Christianity that emphasizes the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit, such as speaking in tongues, prophecy, and miraculous healing. Sovereign Grace Churches may have concerns about the emphasis on subjective experiences and emotionalism within the charismatic movement, and they may also have concerns about the potential for abuse or misdirection within charismatic circles. They may also differ with the charismatic movement's emphasis on the present-day experience of the supernatural gifts of the Spirit, and they may hold to a more traditional view of the cessation of these gifts. Overall, Sovereign Grace Churches may approach the charismatic movement with caution, as they may have concerns about certain aspects of its theology and practice. However, it is important to note that there may be some variation beliefs on this issue within the Sovereign Grace Churches and not all members of this group may hold the same views. I'm starting to notice another commonality, which is the chat GPT really likes to speak very generally and, and clarify and qualify everything it says because it doesn't want to be, you know, and that works out. That also seems like an essay that you'd read from a student. Um, but we have some problems here. You know, if Sovereign Grace Churches is not being viewed as a denomination, and you're just saying any church that holds to Sovereign Grace theology, in other words, Reformed, Calvinistic type theology, like Sovereign Grace Baptist Churches, for example, uh, then this might be closer to accurate because in general, Reformed denominations are much more likely to be cessationist and, and extremely cautious about spiritual gifts. However, Sovereign Grace Churches, the denomination, is actually... Uh, born from the charismatic movement and one of the most open and uh, continuationist charismatic denominations that exists. So you'd not find cessationism in there at all. So um, good try, chat GPT on this one, but did run into some problems there when it started saying that they're, you know, they would be cautious, sure, more cautious than other non-reform uh, type charismatic denominations would be. Um, but I think chat GPT, chat GPT is taking uh, them to, this would look better if it was talking about uh, another reform denomination and not Sovereign Grace Churches. Okay, let's, um, let's give it another one that may be a little bit tricky. What do Southern Baptists, can I pull off believe here, believe about closed communion? Try this one. Closed communion refers to the practice of restricting the sharing of the Lord's Supper or communion to only those individuals who meet certain criteria, such as being members of the same church or denomination. Southern Baptists are a group of Protestant Christians who adhere to Baptist theology and are known for their emphasis on the authority of the Bible and the importance of individual soul liberty. In general, Southern Baptists believe that the Lord's Supper is a sacred ordinance that is intended to be shared among believers in Jesus Christ. In terms of closed communion, Southern Baptists generally do not practice this and believe that the Lord's Supper should be open to all believers who have accepted accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. However, it is important to note that not all Southern Baptists hold the same views on this issue, and there may be some variation in beliefs within this group. Overall, Southern Baptists generally do not practice closed communion and believe that the Lord's Supper sh should be open to all believers who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. All right, yeah, I mean, re repetitious, sure, and not a lot of detail, but it's, it's right, right? Uh, Southern Baptists mostly open communion, but there's freedom. Uh, Southern Baptist Church could hold to open or closed communion and uh, be in perfect compliance with the Baptist faith and message and be part of the Southern Baptist Convention. And uh, with that, I think uh, I'll stop for now asking ChatGPT questions. But if you've enjoyed this video, this channel is all about Christian denominations. So I hope that you'll subscribe and stick around. I'll probably be asking some more questions to ChatGPT in the future.